Hello folks. Welcome back to the plush well-lit design studio here at Unibyte Labs. So today we're going to embark on another little project with uh, our partners over at PCB Way, and we're going to look at op amps. So today I'm just going to introduce you to some of the light theory around it. Uh, for those of you who are not into mathematics, just look at the little red boxes. They sh kind of show the important thing for each of these uh, pages I'm going to show you. So here we have a representation of an operational amplifier. You can see it's um, represented by this triangle with a, a letter A in it. The A is the gain. And we can see it's got a V minus input, a V plus input, and a V out. And the V minus and V plus input are a differential pair of inputs. So what the amplifier is doing is amplifying the difference between these two inputs. Now, if the rules for an ideal operational amplifier are the input impedance of both inputs is infinite, the open loop gain A is infinite, and V plus is always equal to V minus in any kind of circuit that has a feedback. So for some non-infinite value of an output, we have that V out is equal to A times V plus minus V minus. And if we move the A over, divide both sides by A, move it over underneath there, and then take the limit of A as A goes to infinity as it would be in an ideal op amp, we'll see that the VO over VA equals zero. So we can set that back up to here, and we can see that V plus minus V minus equals zero. And this here is where we get V plus equals V minus, rule number three, which is the important rule to remember. Let's go on to the next page. So here we have uh, our first circuit we're going to look at is the non-inverting amplifier. Now basically what happens is you, you put a signal in through V plus and you get a, an amplified signal uh, through V out and it will be in phase with uh, V in. Now since the uh, voltage V plus equals V in and V minus is the divided voltage of V naught by R2 and R1. So it's just a voltage divider here and V minus is the divided voltage. We could put that down here, so we're using rule three, and this is what V plus is, V in, and this is what V minus is here, and this is just R1 over R2 plus R1. It's just the voltage divider formula. Now, if we try to collect our terms, so we want to get V out and divided by V in on one side, and just the resistor values on the other side, we go through a little algebra here, and we end up getting V out divided by V in, which is the gain, is equal to one plus R2 over R1. So that is your gain formula for the non-inverting amplifier. Now here's the inverting amplifier. So it's it's a little bit different here. Now the reason for that is, is because uh, V plus is tied to ground in the inverting case. So according to rule number three, V minus has got to be zero. So we can't really use voltage divider because basically you're setting zero equal to zero and math just doesn't work that way. When you set zero equal to zero, you can do all sorts of crazy things and come up with all sorts of strange answers which are just not right. But we can use Kirchhoff's laws and we can use the current law and the current flowing through the resistors so that we have you know I1 plus I2 equals zero. That's Kirchhoff's current law. Now, I1 is equal to V in over R1, and I2 is equal to V out over R2. So we add those together, and we set it equal to zero. Then we can move the V in over R1 over to this side by subtracting it from both sides so that we get minus V in over R1 over here. Then we multiply both sides by R2 and divide both sides by V in to move the VO over V in on this side and minus R2 over R1. And again, we have V out over V in, and that's our gain. So before we go on with this any further, let's get a word from our sponsors. PCBWay is a fantastic place to go and get your prototype PC boards made up. They make it so simple, they do it so quickly, and they just do it with extremely high quality. But once your prototype has been designed and finalized and you want a custom case for it, where do you go for that? Well, PCB Way. They have complete sheet metal fabrication service and they explain their process. They tell you what the capabilities are, what their sheet metal cutting types are. They even give you the advantages and disadvantages. And they have a vast array of 
fabrication processes, materials, surface finishes, colors, anodization, powder coating. You need a special case built up. It's just as easy as it is getting PCB boards made to get a quote from them. All you have to do is put your CAD files in place, tell them how many they want, It'll decide the design units from the CAD files you put in, but you can also put all this stuff in manually. Select your materials, select your colors, and submit your information, and they'll come back to you with a quote for what it's going to cost. It's just that easy. Anything you do at PCBWay is done easily, it's done quickly, and it's done right. Give them a try. Okay, so the, th the takeaway for this is the gain formulas. So for a non-inverting amplifier, this is our gain. It is 1 plus R2 over R1. And the gain for an inverting amplifier is minus R2 over R1. Now let's go and look at the circuit I came up with to demonstrate this. So here we have very simple circuits. So I've put in a lot of different components here. Uh, in order to come up with a, a way to put together several different kinds of experiments, not just the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, which we're going to do first, but also we could do various filters, integrators, differentiators, and other such things that we'll get into at a later date. So basically what we have here is uh, your typical little jelly bean op amp. It's a, you know, a dual op amp. It could be, a, you know, something like a... a TL072, it could be a, an LM358, it could be uh, any 5532, it could be any one of those. And you just pop it in here and then connect it up. Now, it depends on which one you're using as to whether or not it's going to have fantastic performance or not. And those three that I, I mentioned have completely different characteristics and different performance. And there, some of them are right for sh certain things and some of them are right for other things. For instance, the uh, TL072 is used quite a bit in audio. It's a low noise amplifier. The LM358 is used a lot in digital work because it seems to be optimized for a single supply. So this should be a very a general little circuit. And uh, I got the idea from uh, another YouTuber called Inside Guy. He's got a little board that has two op amps on it, but it's kind of laid out in the same sort of way. Let's go over here and we'll look at the PC board I have made up. I just want to show you the, the silk screen. So the silk screen, we're going to have the op amp, the actual physical op amp is going to be down here in the middle. And then op amp A in that package is going to be down here. And that's going to be our inverting amplifier. And op amp B is set up up here as our non-inverting amplifier. So I've laid out these symbols here so that it looks like the schematic diagrams. And like I say, we can, uh, you can put the resistors in here. This is, uh, you know, R1 and R2, as we showed in the first schematic where we figured out the uh, formulas here. And here are your gain formulas. And uh, we also have the ability that we, we could put in a capacitor here. We could put in a capacitor here, put in a capacitor here. We could put in a capacitor here. So we can change these around. It doesn't have to be R1 and R2. We can manage quite a number of different configurations. So we'll be using these boards for a couple of experiments, a couple of little projects going down the road. And uh, let's look at the, the rest of it. So I did put in, there's a ground plane here, like I, I normally do if I can, I put in a ground plane. And I, this time I put it on the, the top surface of the board and get a little bit closer to the components. And then I, on the bottom here, I've got the traces connecting everything up. So I've already sent this off to PCB Way, and they're going to make these boards up for us. And when they come in, we're going to put some together. And those, the first project I'm going to do is demonstrate to you the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers. Okay, so uh, that's basically all I have for you today. It's just to introduce you to this next project coming up and to show you a little bit about the theory behind the operational amplifiers. I know a lot of people don't like a lot of theory, but it really is important, and the theory behind operational amplifiers, at least at this stage, is pretty simple. And it's, you'd be amazed at what you can use operational amplifiers for. So we'll, we'll try to get into some of that over the next few projects. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. I'd like to thank PCBWay again for helping me do this and bring these little projects to you guys. I appreciate their help a lot. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.